Hi everyone, uh, it's Gilberto Silva here on the Invisible World podcast. Me and my friend Tim Chase again, and I'll talk about something very interesting. And today we have uh, the first and very special guest with us, the World Cup winner, Cleberson, a big friend of mine, and uh, welcome both of you. Thank you, mate. Congratulations, Cleberson, on joining, being the first guest on the uh, Invisible World podcast. Uh, so yeah, congratulations, mate. Must be happy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> How are you, Thank mate? You. Okay. Yeah, I'm alright. Thank you, Gilberto. Thank you, team. Glad to to have the opportunity to talk with you here, guys. Uh, I think it's gonna be amazing. Uh, and then looking forward to see like the question you guys have. I talk a little bit about my life and uh, also the Gilberto. Nice. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. No, no pressure. I think the, the hardest pressure you had, you know, was about play the World Cup. You know, we're going to talk later. And um, he's just relaxed, you know. Feel free to talk and tell us, you know, the stories you want to, to tell us. And uh, Tim, sometime, you know, he'll make some, you know, a naughty question. But don't worry. He's a nice guy. <laughs> but thank you very much, you know. Oh, sorry, Tim. Um, but thank you very much to accept our invitation. You know, it's, uh, it's fantastic to have you with us here today. Yeah, so where in the world are you at the moment, Everson? Where are you? Uh, now I'm in the United States of America, uh, in Philadelphia. I'm currently a coaching for the U12, uh, the young kids. And um, I try to jump in um, a new like, a career in my life. Yeah. via coaching uh, for now i'm very happy uh, i learn a lot here in america uh, people's year is amazing and uh, also the soccer years are growing a lot you saw many kids play soccer mls is growing a lot um, on the league and then um, that's my challenge here uh, i was here for seven years mm-hmm. uh, and then I'm, I'm looking forward to be a professional coach here. Nice. So, did you play for Philadelphia? Is that how you got the, the role there? I did it. I played in um, 2013. I played for eight months here. Uh, that's my first experience here to play soccer in America. It's, so, it's very funny because uh, as soon as I get here, uh, I was thought like, uh, okay, I play in MLS, I can play so easily. So I play like at the top teams in, in Brazil and uh, also in, uh, in Europe, Europe. But uh, the MLS is a very hard to play. The games is so faster, transition so quickly on the field. Uh, but it's, it's a great opportunity for me to change uh, uh, my style. And uh, I enjoyed that moment. But I stayed here just for eight months in that period. And then after this, I come to play for another teams here, NSL teams, uh, uh, Fall Out of Strikers in the 11. And then I retired 2016. Mm-hmm. And then 2017, I started to be a coaching. You're still so young, you know? Look so young, like a, oh, you a little boy from 2002. Yeah. Don't that, <laughs> ah, I turned 41 next month, man. Oh, you have, I remember we have, we were in the World Cup. We saw young that time. Now it's past, man. <laughs> <laughs> now the time uh, have passed, but it looked great. And I say, it's, it's nice to um, uh, see that, um, uh, you know, you stop playing football, but it's still involved with football as a coach now, you know, look forward for the next step. This is uh, something, you, you know, you had in mind before. Uh, you stop playing football. Okay, when I stop playing football, I want to become a coach. Absolutely. Yeah, this I have this in mind before. I think it, we we talked this uh, when I was in uh, Florida for Florida Strikers. I remember I called you like a couple of times, and yeah. then uh, uh, I told you I start to get like the working on my license in Brazil, a license for CBF, and then uh, after that I get more deep to prepare be a coaching, you know. Uh, and then I always love like uh, to see how the coach is working. And then also we work like with amazing coach, like a big field. Uh, I am with uh, Sir Alex Ferguson. Wow, and, uh, it's not bad, eh? Not bad, eh? <laughs> big, big names, right? And then uh, 
we learn a lot of a lot of things, no? And then um, I'm so impressed how the both ones like uh, manage the team, control everyone on the field, and then how they they give the rules for the players, the the knowledge they have to on a, on a soccer or in a football. And then that's why I'm I'm encouraged to be a coaching. Mm-hmm. Now I have a, like a A license and B license from Brazil. I got a the B here from America. I could to do it to the A senior license here in America. And then I still looking forward to get more. More I learn, more I can uh, help me to make a better coach in the future if you want to like a, be a professional coach. So you mentioned two big names. Uh, well, two big coaching names ever in football, big Phil Scolari uh, and Alex Ferguson. From the outside, as a fan, they both seem to be quite emotional uh, characters. Is there anything they had in common about uh, their coaching style? Is there anything similar? I think both are very similar. Like uh, when they get mad, they get mad. <laughs> You better to know about I, this. I, I know, I know a little bit. <laughs> I, I know, I know. Scolari, you know, very close, and Ferguson from this time played yeah. against Arsenal. Awesome. Yeah, we remember when we play like a uh, Arsenal against a uh, Man United on a uh, on World Trafford or in, in London. That the both coachings, uh, players, and then a, a lot of like a fire. That's a, but I, I think. Both ones have the same like um, um, mentality. Uh, both ones very strong. Uh, but uh, one thing I like it for the both ones, they know how they manage their players. No, they are very like a uh, uh, very uh, humble that situation because mm-hmm. they they understand like uh, the players like uh, goals, uh, the players uh, on the field outside the field. When I was in Man United. Uh, Sir Alex Ferguson, he tried to help me a lot outside the field so I can have more like um, familiar with the things in England and uh, he he like a, one of big people helped me there but is that and a uh, big field is a different guy he's a he's having the same like a, 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 um, thoughts like a Sir Alex Ferguson but he's a more like a father no he's he care you about a lot, about you a lot, you know, and then, uh, he, and then also he gave me like a opportunity to play my first World Cup, and then he, for me, both one doesn't have too many different inside the field, mm-hmm. uh, also outside. Nice. So it's like it feels like a father figure, and then you obviously had Uncle Gilberto as well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was, like my, it was like my young brother, you know, <laughs> because um, I remember when we were together in, in the national team, in the World Cup, especially, we were the younger ones, you no, know, apart from Kaká. But me and him, you know, because Fleb, Flebison, like myself, was very shy, you know. But you know, we have a reason, you know, play among uh, players like Cafu, Ronaldo, Rivaldo, Ronaldinho. And uh, Roberto Carlos, you know, we, they were our idols and uh, play more alongside them was something unique for us. Uh, we were very shy, you know, he was like my, my little brother. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that, that's totally true. But how, how imagine how are you going to go to Brazil national team, get around like that place, you say that, and then, uh, okay, let's go run out, come here. That's weird. I'm so shy. Come here, bro. Come here, bro. Yeah. Come here, bro. No way. Oh, I, oh that's... Uh, I don't, we play, like, a, before going to the Brazil national team, we play with that guys with, like, a the video game. And, like, uh, three months later or two months later, we on a field with them and joking and then listening to the guys talk. I said, oh, my God. I, that's why uh, me and Gilberto get too close because I always went in his room and said, Gilberto, man, you help me, man. <laughs> 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 oh, it's funny. Oh, I was great. Yeah, you, you make a like a, because we are very young. And then um, also, you, we are like a very friend at that time. Mm. Uh, and, uh, but it's, it's not easy like a, 
to get around their guys and then uh, and and feel like okay they're my friend let's go talk after the world cup no that's a different no gilberto but yeah, before yeah. i just get there is ah that's no sense. <laughs> but did you guys start uh for the national team at about the same time oh uh, i think gilberto went in a uh before because I think you you get like a, the um, two thousand. I played it in two thousand one. I was selected yeah. for for the last two games of uh, the qualification. You know? Yeah, exactly. And yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. It was just about November. The last two games, the last you know, we we qualified the last the last game against Venezuela home, <laughs> and after lost to lose to Bolivia away. I always tough to play there in the altitude. But then 2000 after the qualification, 2002 came and we had remember we had like seven friendly games and then you, you were there selected by Scolari. You know, me and you, Kaka, Anderson Pog and some other players. Only players play here in Brazil. Yeah, I remember that. We played I think we played again in Bolivia. On uh, in Guyana, and then uh, we won like a six zero six one something like that. Remember, remember who scored that day? You scored that day. Ah, yeah. <laughs> I remember. Yeah. I crossed two goals. Crossed two. Yeah, he scored two goals, man. He does this shit. Yeah. So he does this shit. Yeah. So I ask a question, which makes him look amazing. <laughs> I the first goal at Arsenal near ground, the Emirates. I it's could not miss. Game. I could not miss. You know this moment. <laughs> Yeah, well, one thing Gilberto was, he was a great on the, on, on the cross in the box because he's just need to put the ball in the box. You always go into the ball. And I, I was watching like, a, I think a month ago, the final in the World Cup two, 2002. Oh, yeah. And then I watched that. Gilberto, you almost scored before the everyone yeah. on the crossing, you heading the ball and then uh, can't save the ball. Say, wow, look at you, Berto. Well, he, he I was close. I was, yeah. I was, I was close, you know, I was close to score after the Roberto Carlos cross. <laughs> but you also, you also had a, a fantastic impact on that day. You have a, you had a, a crossbar, you know, you hit the crossbar as well. And you had, before the crossbar, you had a, a very good opportunity. You, when you hit with your, I think, your left foot, I said, come on, I should have done better. <laughs> I can't believe I missed that goal. I was like a shooting so easy with my left at that time, and then I'm, uh, I get. Yeah, but, <laughs> no, but it's not. It's not easy. You now being there in the final, you know, for us was something too heavy to be there. With the responsibility, you know, wow, for the country. Man, you you think about this? We were now final, the World Cup 2002, and me and you, young players, and then like on like a. <laughs> Plays high level there, and then we. Oh my God! Yeah. How, how is it? How, <laughs> how, how is it? How is it for you? You know, because sometimes uh, you know it seems like uh, I'm still dreaming. But how is it for you when you think about being there in that final? You know, play with those guys. When you look around, you know, you see behind you Kafu. Wow, Kafu is the captain. And then you see the other side, Roberto Carlos. Oh, fantastic! And then you look up front, Ronaldo and Ronaldinho and Rivaldo. How is it for you, you know, when you think about it? Gilberto, uh, the people always ask me that question for me, how I feel like a, in that World Cup final. But uh, to be fair, Gilberto, I was like a, so composed that day. I was I don't know what happened. We, we are like, um, I feel like I was an Atletico Paranaense that time. I just play. Looks yeah. like I'm not the, like a think about the World Cup final. Just look like I want to enjoy the game. That's the only only thing because the players, like you said, are, have around us. They help you guys, help me, help you to like to keep the high level. You mind? Yeah. And then uh, I feel like so positive that game. And then the things that uh, happen from my side, like I have the the uh, some opportunity in a, in a game. Uh, I always like I want to receive the ball. I was looking forward to get like a, a, an, a an space in the field because I think everyone's get a, a lot of attention on uh, Rivaldo, Ronaldo, Roberto Carlos, and that guys. And then 
they they forget him, uh, me and Gilberto in the field, and then uh, we are okay. Let's play. <laughs> Gilberto still is a, a lot of tackles in the Germany guys, and then I try to keep for the guys to kind of hurt me, <laughs> and then uh, that's that's fun. That's that's a good final. So how I'm old are you? Sorry. How old are you? Now I am almost forty-one. Next oh, month sorry, I turn forty-one. Played in two thousand two. Oh, 2002? I was like at 23. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And Gilberto, what were you, about 30? No, I was 20. <laughs> 20. I was 25. <laughs> you know, I was 25. No, but it's, uh, it's great. You know, you, you, you said that um, you were, you know, on your mind, you will behave like you will play for Atletico Valencia because you were very, let's say, very comfortable in the game. I watched uh, the final, you know, not many times. It took me so many years to watch it, watch it again. <laughs> but when I watched you, your movements on the field, you were very calm, very, let's say, relaxed on the field, very confident. You know, you create a lot of, you know, some good chance for yourself. You know, the way you were moving, you know, was, was something, you know, very... We could see that you were comfortable in the game. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you, Gilberto. I think uh, one thing I did well on that game, uh, I always do the simple things when I was with the ball and without the ball. I always like uh, try to find in a safe space. When you're defending, I always try to stay close to you so I can uh, not open the, the, the midfielder. But when we have the ball, I always try to find like a space in the field. And then also Cafu that game, stay a little bit back. He didn't get high a lot. And then I, as soon as we received the ball, I was open so I can receive the ball on, a, on the right side. Look, looks like I play a, a winger and uh, sometimes inside like an eight. Uh, and then I, was, I feel very positive. Every ball I have, I have a, like a... a I think quickly, I find like, my teammates quickly and then move in, uh, into the space. And, uh, and then that game, Germany is a very like a good team, very tactical team. Uh, like I said, they make a lot of folks to defend like the top players for us. And then uh, I have a space to, to find in the field. That's why the, the things help like a positive for my side. Amazing that on the most, the biggest game of your career, you felt so relaxed. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Um, Gilberto's mentioned a few times that you stayed with us for an extra 10 minutes because you wanted to finish the songs. Uh, is that right? Do you remember that? I remember, I remember when we, every time when we went to the game, uh, we would play samba, you know, the guys in the back of the bus. You know, uh, make the samba music, play the instruments, you know. But in the day of the final, you know, if you remember, we, everyone uh, drop off the bus, you know, the staff, but we stayed there because we missed a few songs. I think, I don't know, two or three more songs. We need to complete the playlist. But we stay there and jump around, sing, you know, yeah. just jump, you know, make a big noise inside the bus, sing. You remember that? Yeah, but I remember that day. We, everyone, like a, get out the bus and then everyone back including like the the, the staff guys because we, we always do that before the game like uh, the guys get a sing like a samba and then everybody like uh, enjoy that moment and then we go to the World Cup final you cannot broke that that, that ceremony uh, and then we we, be, we go back to the bus and then Swing like a three songs, and then they get out the the bus. But th that's true. That's very true. Mar Marcos, you know, Marcos always. Oh, there is miss this another another song. After we finish, okay, let's go. No, no, there's another one missing. <laughs> you know, and they kept going for about yeah. ten minutes. You know, and they jump around and uh, sing another other song was. You know, it's like um, for me. Uh, think about it. It's like the chemistry was. Almost complete, you know, very complete, very uh, in the same direction because um, small details we have done, we kept, you know, uh, we kept it, 
I kept doing the same the same way until the end. You know, it didn't change. You know, the the, the way we have done things before the, the previous games, even the final. You know, we stayed. I remember we stayed there about ten minutes. You know, uh, the cameras were there outside the bus waiting for us. We stayed there like crazy guys singing, jumping, jumping around. I guess. I guess what that means is that it's you're you're in control by not getting off the bus when you have to, making people are waiting for you, not feeling pressure from anywhere else, from the cameras, the staff, anywhere else. You're going absolutely fuck everybody else, and we're doing what we want to do. That puts you in, in a really strong position. Did you did you kind of feel like that at the time? Yeah, I think the face for that team, it's a, everybody like a happy happenings in that time and then we do things like uh the peoples from brazil doing we are happy we like like a dance samba we we very enjoy like to make a new friend we have very enjoy to show for everyone our culture you know uh and that period uh we are in a great moment Everyone in a great moment. Brazil national team is growing um, a lot on the competition, and then that generation, it's it's amazing. That's why uh, the people's respect when uh, when we did that. I know we you, you broke like a couple rules, like especially that one on the bus when it got like it take a long time. Or the I remember when they need to do interview after the game. We we never go or in the last uh, after the World Cup. Everybody said no, go together. Don't go only one. And then everyone like a pass it together with Samba. With the, <laughs> <laughs> and then the instrument, you know. Yeah. 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 And no, then I love that. Yeah. No, it's great because uh, everyone understood that um, we were, you know, enjoying the moment and celebrate all together. Uh, as we kind of br broke the rules of not giving an interview, we came all together. But everyone celebrated, playing the instrument, you know, singing. I, you know, they were not expecting that. Nobody was expecting. Oh. They stay oh, you know, surprised, <laughs> but somehow understanding the moment you work, we work. Yeah, we know organized this. That's like looks like a something happened and it happened that time, and then everyone like a. I agree. That's no, we not broke like something like for reason. Mm. That's that's like a so natural. Yeah. Yeah. So have you guys spoken since you won the World Cup? Has there been a kind of a conversation where you've kind of sat down and gone through memories of the World Cup and what happened? Yeah. We, can do that. we spoke a couple of times. You know, after the World Cup, me and the club have uh, been together again uh, in the national team. And, um, you know, it, the conversation came quite natural. You know, I said, oh, now we are woke up, you know, what then, you know, what then? And uh, sometimes, you know, when I think about it, uh, you know, when people ask me, you know, what's the meaning of being a World Cup winner? Sometimes I still struggle, struggling to, to answer, you know, to find the right answer to, to the people. I said, I, I don't know exactly what's the meaning you know, for other people. For me, something I, I just have a, a real idea when somebody comes to me and uh, the approach they, they, they have, they make me, and uh, the enthusiast they make, oh, this is a World Cup winner, this is about You know, but, you know, I try to, to process the information very natural. But sometimes, you know, when you think about, you know, the moments, you know, the 52 days we stay there and uh, having fun in the training session. Scolari is sometimes not always happy. <laughs> and uh, that twice. Being, you need to give me. You need to tell us an example of Scolari getting upset because that's twice now you said Scolari gets upset. So we need. We need. Yeah. We need to but, tell, tell you, Bert, about the the last the the, the game before the the fight World Cup final. With Ronaldo. <laughs> well, with Ronaldo. Oh, well, there's one situation with Ronaldo. I don't know if I told you, Tim. I don't think so. But um, uh, we, were, we were there, you know, just a few days before the final, two moments. And uh, Scolari wants to do the free kick. And uh, the free kick, and uh, I was on the wall. You were there on the wall as well. 
You were there yeah. in the yeah, wall. Yeah, there in the wall. Yeah. I think Clebison, Edmilson, I think Lucio and um, Ronaldo. Ronaldo was in the wall also. But who was taking the free kick? It was Roberto Carlos. Oh, yeah. Now I said, come on, this is not a good idea. <laughs> this is not a good idea. The, the biggest pro, uh, Roberto Carlos and Ronaldinho, we didn't have like, uh, you know, the mannequins, you know. Yeah. The, the, and then we were there and um, Ronaldinho take, you know, okay, just over the wall. But Roberto, Roberto yeah. Carlos, no, my friends. Roberto Carlos just come and hit hard, you know. And Ronaldo always, you know, get off the way, you know. The ball pass close to your, your ears, you know, and make a big noise. It's, it's, a fuck, it's not going to be good. It's not going to end up well. And Ronaldo was just all the time changing. And Scolari, at some, at some point, he got pissed off. Come on. What's going on? You know, stay, stay quiet. He said, I, I cannot stay quiet. Roberto is hitting hard. I said, come on, Roberto. Stop doing this kind of shit. No, slow down, Roberto. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I think he kept hitting hard until the moment Scolari came. Oh, come on. Get off my way. I don't know. I didn't bring Romario, but Romario came inside of you, you know. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. that, let me explain it, it, this situation better because I mentioned Romario. Because before the World Cup, uh, a, a lot of uh, people want to have Romario in the, in the, in the group. And uh, in the end, you know, Scolari decided not to bring him and brought Ronaldo, you know, because Ronaldo was... At some point, a question mark because of uh, his injury, but uh, he recovered. He recovered from from uh, the knee injury and was there with us. You know? But he made that uh, just this like uh, because he, he got pissed, you know, because Ronaldo could not stay quiet. He always moved, you know, always like. This. But me too. I want to run away, you know, when Robert Carlos starts to to run to the ball. <laughs> yeah, and then and the big feel is that he, he's so mad. Uh, I remember when I woke up on a training session, they give like the new balls for us to training. And then I was crossing, I, I took the corner kick and I, I hit one. The balls don't get higher. Hit two, don't get higher. And then he turned around to me and said, dude, you want to play World Cup and then you can <laughs> not kick the ball? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's Luis Felipe Escolari. <laughs> it was the special uh, Adidas one, wasn't it? With had a special coating. Around it, right? It's a different type of ball. Sorry, I, I couldn't understand. A different type of football. Was, was that the first year they had a different type of football? Is that right? The ball? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We because um, we have the different ball before I go there. I soon you get the World Cup, and then you have the the real ball to to the tournament. But the the ball is a little take your time, so you can uh, adapt to your technique to kick the ball to passing. And then uh, I, was in, I was in the beginning that I don't have like a total control to kick the ball. And then uh, and that day, Felipe Scolari got so mad with me. Yeah, cause plus, the, plus the pressure, plus the pressure. Yeah. <laughs> I remember the goalkeeper saying that the ball swerved and moved so much, they couldn't see, they couldn't work out where the ball was going to go. Yeah, exactly. The ball like, um, is, is too, when, when you, like, it's, it's a good only for Roberto Carlos. Roberto Carlos loved yeah. that ball. But a goalkeeper, guys playing in the middle or center backs, he has to hit hitting, hitting the ball. Is it's impossible? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. All the time, you know. Yeah. Well, to be fair to Ronaldo, I think if you could choose the worst person to be in a wall when they're taking a free kick ever in football, Roberto Carlos would be the one person you wouldn't want to be standing in a wall when he's taking free kicks. I can't think of anyone worse to take free kicks if I was standing in a wall, right? But he. He has a secret. He said he's he's targeting his face, your face, and then kick the ball, <laughs> or you take him hands out, or you or you knock down. <laughs> we have to be it. lucky, not <laughs> you have to be lucky, you know, for him not to hit your face. <laughs> oh my god! You don't, want, you don't want to be the person on the if you look the wall there. You don't want yeah. to be the person here. You want to be these two people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was the fourth one, and then oh my gosh, Roberto Carlos. <laughs> And imagine if he didn't hit, uh, hit Ronaldo like two days before the World Cup final and he injures Ronaldo because yeah. he's broken his nose or something. 
would not would not be a good idea. <laughs> would not be a good no. idea. No, 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 it's not be a good idea. <laughs> Jibri, we've obviously spoken on a couple of podcasts a few weeks ago about how much it meant for Brazil to win the World Cup and how much responsibility you had. Clemson, mm-hmm. did you kind of feel the same thing with going into the World Cup? Yeah, I do. I think um, we still like uh, sometimes, like Gilbert said, we still, still try to figure out like, uh, oh, I won the World Cup. And then we we know this when uh, the people like coming to talk to you. Uh, out here in America for seven years, you know, soccer is still growing here. Uh, and soccer here or football is not is not top sport in America. Uh, basketball, baseball, football, American football is a, a top sport here. Not many people like know about the the soccer, but it's still growing here. And then uh, it's funny when um, I can walk anywhere here, and then uh, nobody like um know who who I am, no. And then uh, as soon as I get outside America, like in Brazil or something in Spain or Portugal, something like that, the people are like, whoa, that's no clever song. That's the guy play World Cup from Brazil. And then uh, and then I come back and I say, whoa, yeah, I won the World Cup. That's me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah that's, that's, it's too <laughs> and, and, uh, my wife sometimes uh, get to me and say, oh, you're so humble. I can't believe it. if I won the World Cup, I'm not like you. I'm a different person. That's exactly <laughs> then, what I'm saying. <laughs> But you know, you don't prepare for this. You know, like a, it's so natural. You come in, but I'm so proud of the guys, the people coming to me and say, "Oh, thank you. You did a great job in um, in World Cup, mm. like a uh, famous uh, that kind of stuff. Like a, uh, it's good for us because uh, we like um and um, we never imagined like a today, like a twenty, uh, and, 18 years later, we're gonna be like, oh my god, the guys still remember yeah. that, still remember our our face, you still talk about like cross, my ball written a cross pass, and yeah. uh, still remember the assistant, uh, the assistant for Ronaldo. That's 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 a great memory you have. I have it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes for me, you know, it's still, um, you know, uh, when people come to me, it's, it's quite funny. But, you know, um, when I look back and understand a little bit uh, about the responsibility of representing the country, uh, something uh, amazing, you know, how uh, did we, um, you know, did not, I didn't talk about that because we were very focused about uh, playing the games, we didn't think about what was going on here in Brazil. We just want to play football, and um, you know, and having the support of the, the senior players like Cafu, uh, Rivaldo, Roberto, Naldo, and Scolari. You know, support in other lot. We didn't talk that much, but you know, for me, Clash, I don't know if for you you had the same idea, but uh, I, after we won the the game against Germany, we of course we celebrate and so on. But I just you know understood how is to be a World Cup winner when I arrived here in Brazil. See the people, you know, you know uh, when I, we were arriving in the airport, you know the aircrafts, you know from the the army, you know the, the air force came, you know to escort us, you know until we learned was some oh wow we are learning the country. And then we get up into the, the bus, you know, uh, doing the parade, people everywhere, you know, coming and jumping on the trees and came out on the street. And then I realized, wow, this is the meaning of being World Cup winner. Yeah, I totally agree. That, that, that picture for the, we are in our plane and then we look down and see like a, many, many of people on the street on a tree, something like that. Say, oh my gosh, that's everything that for, for what I, we did it. Wow, that's unbelievable. That's for a football match. Yeah, that's a... incredible how much just winning a football match, not, it sounds, but it, all it is is winning a football match and it changes people's lives, you know, it gives them positivity. Uh, Gilberto says that winning the World Cup changed his life dramatically. What did you did you feel that the same thing is did the winning the World Cup kind of ch- uh, change your career and your life? Yeah, they change a lot. They change a lot because um, 
we play like a not like a top top clubs in Brazil uh, Atlético Paranaense at that period like a still growing a uh, with the big, big teams in, in Brazil uh, and then everything changed when I'm when I won the World Cup uh, I'm not the the I tried to do the normal clever slot before that is a is a tough one because uh, where I'm going where I what am I doing the people talk them talk with me uh, and then uh, one thing I need to change I uh, I need I pass to care more about myself, you know, about like uh, the things I did it inside or outside the field, you know. Responsibilities, uh, you know? Yeah. You have more responsibility because then after we won the World Cup, you know, the people see us and I could not also, I, I could not go out on the street, but then people want to have an autograph, pictures, but then we feel more responsible, you know, uh, towards people, towards what we have achieved. Because people see us, you know, oh, like, uh, you know, this is a superstar. But, you know, inside of us, we're still the same person. Yeah. But we have to be careful the way we act towards the people, the way we behave, you know, inside and outside, and to deliver, keep delivering the right message. Yeah. Especially for the, the young age, you know, Gilberto? Because yeah. everyone's like follow. Uh, the same like uh, uh, history we have in the in Brazil national team. We come like for the bottle, bottle of the the team, and then we we finish like with the top players. And then I, when I went to Atlético Paranaense that days, I always tell for the young players, hey guys, you just have to be work hard in a, in your life, believe in your dream, and and then work hard because the history is here and it show. If you work hard, if you prepare well yourself for your opportunity, you, you have the opportunity to play in a, in a Brazil national team. And then we we need to to be like responsible for their story after the World Cup, no? Yeah, it's true. Right. Right. So how how soon after winning the World Cup did the transfer to Manchester United happen? Well. Uh, After the World Cup, I got back to Brazil and then I played more one year for Atlético Paranaense. Uh, and then I still go to Brazil national team. And then, uh, and then uh, I remember when I went to France to play a, a friendly match against France. And then the, the guys from uh, Man United, the director, they went in a, in a hotel and then they start to to tell me uh, about the opportunity to go to play a Man United. And that period, they won like a Ronaldinho for the same time with me. Uh, and then uh, I said, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. That's real. And uh, I know when you went to the Arsenal in 2003? Sure. sure. I went uh, after the World Cup, straight yeah. away. Yeah. Yeah. And then you went one, one year later. And then they, they told me uh, a lot of good things about uh, Gilberto because Gilberto uh, went there and then he did well. He won, I think, it was the FA Cup final. Yeah, yeah we won. We we, we won the, the FA Cup in that year. Yeah, and then uh, I started to I'm looking forward for graduating, you know? uh, and then after six months. I went to the to the England, but only in 2003. Ah, so you said you mentioned Ronaldinho. Was Ronaldinho kind of talking to Manchester as well? Yeah, and that period when the guys from Man United start to talk with us, it's a uh, they talk with Ronaldinho, and then also they start to talk with me. I know Man United they won uh, uh, Ronaldinho before, mm. you know. I think I remember a story. Did Ronaldinho say that he was going to join them as well and then he joined Barcelona at the last minute? Is that true? Yeah, it is true. Ronaldinho is like, <laughs> deeply me. It's deeply me. I know. I, I was, I, I was, every time when I see him, I say, oh, Ronaldo, okay, <laughs> you're on my list. Because it, we, we spoke together and then he said, okay, Cleberson, I think I'm going. Then I go back to Brazil. Oh, I'm, and then we don't have that technology like like you have it today. It's easy to communicate with the guys. 
é, né, ao, ao 100% assim, oh, o Ronaldinho is going to, with me na né, Mario Night, but I didn't tell for nobody because my nesse o oh, Everson tell everyone Ronaldinho is going to Mario Night and I get quiet and then like a uh, Two weeks later, he's he signed to the Barcelona, and then yeah. I went to Manchester. Did he talk to him about that? Was he just playing? Why did he do that? <laughs> did you talk to him about it? No, you, you just like a joking sometimes. Oh, it's like, okay, so he's playing a joke. Yeah, yeah just joking. Say, oh, you did that. I can't believe you did that. <laughs> yeah. It make it make a nice dribble to Manchester United. Dribble Manchester United and then went to Barcelona. Yeah, we're not at home. <laughs> <laughs> Step over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just now again, went back to Boston. <laughs> yeah. How, how I still you, think about the he changed because the weather. Somebody told him it's raining a lot in Manchester. Then they, oh, I've never been to Manchester when it's not raining. It's always raining. <laughs> I go to Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Right, so, how did you find That's your time fun. in the UK? What's the difference between uh, Brazilian club football, the Premier League, and the MLS? Is there m massive differences? Yeah, there's, uh, in my opinion, there's a lot of different, especially in Brazil. Brazil, you, you the players in Brazil are more technical players. Who, uh, players sometimes decide this, decide the game in itself in a couple like a uh, situation in the field. Uh, it's still growing now. A lot of uh, tacticals, a lot of like good coaches come in Brazil and then try to implement some things different. And uh, and that period when I was in England is a lot of like a long ball, very yeah. very fast ball, and then a, a lot of tackles. Uh, lot of cross, yeah, a lot of crossing in the box. Players very ag aggressive players, you know. Uh, and then here and then the last it's the tech the uh, the level of technicals is a little bit low. That's not too much quality of the players. MLS try to bring like a uh, a lot of top players to come here to play for MLS so I can share the experience with the young boys so I can they learn a little bit. But it's a lot of transition, a lot of like a tight space, no no much time to think with the ball. Uh, but it's still grow here. But uh, those three is a very different, very 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 different. Okay, cool. So, I also, you know, there is a, what I can mention in terms of difference, you know, uh, team. And, you know, I never played in MLS, but MLS, like Brazil, you know, the traveling is something that can have a, a big impact on the games as well. Great point. You know, the distance. You know, Brazil is uh, such a big country like uh, United States. And uh, you have, like, the, the long distance that sometimes, you know, it's quite hard. It's very hard for the players all this traveling and uh, here in Brazil we had I remember that time we had a lot of games so many games you know and then we play Sunday in the south and then you have to travel four or five hours you know up north three days later you know and sometimes it's quite hard but then to adapt you know, also in the Premier League you know, to the speed of the game and I, 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 I had this kind of difficult at the beginning you know and um, but you have to find a balance, you know, whenever you are to, to produce the best football as you can.